how do you uh, use it then? Do you use the flowers? I'd use the flowers and make a wash, yeah. Yeah, and make a wash and pour it onto their hair, yeah. It's also used to treat eczema internally as well. As a tea? As a tea. Do you know Hera? Do you all know, have you all met Hera? I think she did her dissertation on the treatment of skin problems with, with that. But Alcamilla uh, vulgaris is used predominantly as a female herb, as a woman's herb, for gynaecological problems. It's had very little modern research done on it, but, you, but it's put into virtually every medicine used for gynaecological problems. It helps with regulating periods um, and it can help in the menopausal um, state. And the reason why it's called ladies' mantle was partly because of its historical use for women's problems. But a mantle is an old-fashioned word for a coat. And they used to think that the leaves were like a lady's coat. That If you imagine a lady standing here, this would go over her shoulders. And so it would be like a mantle to keep her safe and calm. Yarrow. This is another very, very um, strong female gynaecological herb. Um, yeah, also in the, I, I think I've spoken to some of you about this before, not that I know very much about planetary systems and lunar herbs and solar herbs and all that sort of stuff, but um, uh, yarrow is a plant that's known as a lunar herb. And if you go out at night time when it's in flower, when the moon's full, like at the moment, you can see it from across a field glowing in the moonlight. It's amazing. Um, and it's very much, again, very much used for, the menstru for menstrual disorders. Um, it also increases blood flow to, to the abdomen and away from the heart. And so it's um, very commonly used in um, mixes for high blood pressure. A Avena sativa and verbena officinalis. Uh, together, really commonly. They, they seem to work very well, apart from that, they rhyme, which is always nice. Um, they work very well um, for the treatment of stress which is also just known as either Atropa or Belladonna. Um, and it's used predominantly in the treatment for pain as a very strong muscle relaxant. But it's a Schedule 3 herb, so you have to be qualified supposedly to use it. Um, essentially, Philopendula is our probably one of our strongest anti-inflammatory herbs. Um, it, her, do you all know what the smell of deep heat smells like? That methyl stink, it smells really strongly of that. If we were allowed, if I was taking on a wild herb walk, I would dig up a bit, and the root has got a really high content of methyl salicylate in it, and will work even if you've got swollen um, gums or tooth from toothache, works really well just chewing on it. Um, you're not meant to do that, but it works perfectly well. I'd recommend it if you're ever in that state. The root, is it? Yeah, the root. But but in, in herbal medicine, we use the flowering top. So the aerial parts, which is everything above ground, it's harvested when it's in flower, um, which is normally sort of June, July time that it comes into flower. Um, it's quite uh, easy to identify that it... You know, do you know the rosaceae family anyway? Rose family? Yeah. It's got very classic rosaceae-shaped leaves. And then between each leaf... Here, it's got little leaflets in between, and the ribs are really red in colour. Can you see that? Quite deep. This is kind of getting old now, but quite deep red. The midriff vein in there. Um, in, in normal life, it normally grows about that sort of high, rather than this high. I'm not quite sure why it's so small. Um, but it's used generally as a painkiller, as an analgesic.